Hey everyone, Theo here from Believe Hi-Fi and today I'm going to go over my review and my experiences living with the Harbeth 30.1 speaker. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to do is go into why I purchased the Harbeth 30.1 at the time I did and the journey along the way and what else I tried and why I finally settled on that speaker. I wish I could show it to you right now, but due to COVID and moving situations, unfortunately, I do not have it on hand. But without further ado, this is the story. So I was actually at a friend of mine's house who's a mastering engineer, and he had uh, these really beautiful old dual concentric tannoys in his engineering mastering engineering studio. And there was something about the sound of them that was effortless. It didn't feel like I was having sound thrown at me. I didn't feel like this, this unnatural unease to the sound. Everything felt for the first time what made everything else feel forced. And I was hearing the, the vocals and the sound of instruments in particular. And I was like, wow, you know, it just, it just took me by surprise at how beautiful and natural that it sounded. From that point on, I kind of was on a search to find something else that was along the lines of that sound. But the reason I didn't go for it in particular was I did find it was a little, a little bit drier or thinner than I, I wanted something with a little bit more warmth and, and body at this particular time. I wanted something that was relaxing, that you could relax into. So I tried a whole bunch of speakers. You know, I tried Dyn Audios, I tried PMC, I tried ATC, I tried Contrast Audio, I tried um, just brand after brand after brand after brand. And I stumbled upon a dealer with Harbeth finally. And this wasn't just trying them. I was I was looking at reviews, I was trying them. I was talking to people that I respect their opinions. And finally, I heard the Harbeth line of speakers. Now, they're definitely not a pair of speakers for everyone. Like every time I do a review, I'm going to tell you who the product is for and who it's not for. So this speaker, let's get it right out of the way before I get into detailed sound opinions. This speaker is for people that like to listen to mostly simple music. When I say simple music, I just mean something that's not like crazy dynamic with heaps of things going on, but vocals, chamber music, just simple music with vocals and instruments. That's where this speaker or the brand in its entirety shines. Now, the other good thing about Harbeth and the 30.1 the anniversary edition is a little different and some of the other lines are a little different, but the Harbour 30.1 in particular, it's not going to make any of your music sound bad. Um, like some high-end speakers, let's say PMC, for example. PMC is like razor sharp in terms of its accuracy and it sounds ridiculously nice with pianos and drums. However, if you listen to a recording that's less than stellar, it is just going to put that really brutally to you. And it can ruin enjoyment sometimes. You know, I listen to some music that isn't so perfectly mixed and mastered. You know, I like bands like Tame Impala. I like um, all, all, all these kind of sort of indie bands and I like to listen to them and maybe they're not produced and mixed and mastered so perfectly. And I don't always want my listening experience to yell that out at me. So the Harbeth is great for vocals, instruments, simple type of music. It's it's kind of like a warm, comfy, puffy jacket and a warm home-cooked meal. That's how I would describe this speaker, you know. You just relax into it and it makes you feel calm and you just listen to the music and you enjoy it, even if it's not mixed that well, even if it's not mastered that well. It's a really enjoyable experience. And when you listen to vocals it's it's amazing the the sound of the voice 
it almost makes a lot of other speakers sound a little, how would I put it? A little artificial or a little bit sharp or a little metallic. It just has this beautiful sound to it. So that was at that point when I auditioned it and that's the experience I got with the 30.1. I did listen to the P3 ESR, but I'll leave that for another video. The reason I went mainly for this speaker, it's obviously quite a lot bigger and it was more suitable for the listening situation I wanted, which was just two channel in quite a large space. Um, I did try the Harbeth 40.1s as well, but they were a little out of my budget at that point in time. So I went with the 30.1s. Now I'm going to go into how this speaker looks. I'm going to tell you right now, any videos, any pictures, don't do it justice. You can look at it and go, mm, it looks kind of cool, but when you see it in the flesh, it's, it's something else. You know, it's a quite an old school boxy design, but the wood and the finish, it just screams quality. One thing that's a little annoying, the grill is very hard to get off. My one sort of had this magnetic system where I could sort of get it off like that, or I'd try to get a credit card in there and pull it off, but it's very tough to get the grill off. But it's a beautiful looking speaker. I can tell you that much. I absolutely adored it and you know it's it just give it a dust here and there and it it looks amazing it feels amazing and it really feels like you own something that's been masterfully hand crafted my pair was the rosewood pair um, i do think the 30.2 which is the anniversary edition does look the best in that i believe it's silver eucalyptus but at this point in time, they didn't have the 30.2 and I was so excited, so I purchased the 30.1. All right, let's get into it, sound. As I touched on before, this speaker has a sound that is suited for music that is of a basic or simpler variety. It doesn't want crazy, busy metal or um, it doesn't want... EDM or anything that's a bit too wild. It wants simple, gentle music, vocals, instruments, um, live recordings sound fantastic. So the general characteristic, as I described before, it's like a home cooked warm meal and this big warm jacket or blanket. It, it comforts you. It's not too sharp. It, it, it's very rolled off in the top. However, However, it does it does get quite a lot of detail. You'd be surprised. Generally, people go, oh, it's rolled off and warm. You're not going to extract much detail. But especially, especially the 30.2, they extract a hell of a lot of detail, especially in the mid-range. The mid-range detail is really amazing. And the thing I like about the detail presentation of the Harbour 30.1 and 30.2 is everything's there, but it doesn't shout it at you or throw it artificially. You can't fake detail, but sometimes I feel like it's just meant to be there. It's part of the song. It's not meant to be this new thing that jumps out and screams at you. You know, everything just sounds naturally as it should be. And it's probably just a perception of, how it should be because I wasn't there when they mixed and mastered it, but it's seemingly natural and it seemingly sounds just right. So bass wise, um, the bass actually is quite good considering it only, I think it rolls off at about, starts to roll off at about 60 hertz or so. And I believe the speaker is rated down to 50 hertz. But the bass is quite good. I think there's a little bit of a hump somewhere in those maybe around 100, 150, to somewhere around there. I think there's a little bit of a hump to compensate for the fact it doesn't quite extend all the way down. But the bass is quite nice, but, but it's definitely not the quickest bass. 
it's not a speaker for EDM. It's not a speaker for drum and bass. It's not a speaker for rock. It's not a speaker for metal. It's not a quick speaker. If you want that kind of speaker, look elsewhere. Maybe look at PMC. Maybe look at ATC. Maybe look at something else if you want to stick with a British brand or just go somewhere else entirely. This speaker is not designed for that. And even when I paired it up to a Rel T7i, which is an amazing subwoofer, yeah, it, it definitely improved what was happening, but still, I didn't buy the speaker for that and you can't expect it to do that in the bass. All right, as you stretch up into the, the mid-range, I think there's there's something going on with a little bit more energy in the frequencies as you're leaving the bass spectrum and you're going into the mids because you feel that warmth sort of bleed into the mids, especially on the 30.1s, maybe not as much, definitely not as much on the 30.2s. Just to clarify, the 30.2s are the anniversary edition with upgraded internals, binding posts, and a bunch of other minor upgrades and a cosmetic upgrade. I think it is the better speaker when you want detail but they're just different. So the 30.1 mids, as I said, pretty pretty detailed. For a speaker that's this soft and relaxing and easy to listen to and enjoyable, you are getting a lot of detail. After all, it's a monitoring speaker. So while it might not be thin and sterile and what people generally tend to go, oh, that, that's a detailed speaker, you can still have warmth and enjoyment and have detail. Now, for me, I feel like this isn't the best, it's not the best at producing all instruments. I've definitely, at this price point, I've heard better for, as I said, I, I would take a PMC when we're talking about piano or drums. Um, but when it comes to um, guitar, str any strings, um, Wind instruments too. The 30.2 does the wind instruments a bit better than the 30.1. And obviously vocals. Um, vocals are amazing on this speaker. There's just this extra almost um, wetness or just something to the vocals that makes it sound more natural. Generally, I don't know if it's the material of the, the cone, which they claim it is, but there's something that makes it sound more real and like it's there. It's a human voice, not a speaker portraying a well-imaged voice in the center, but it sounds like a human is speaking to you. Um, but I will say most of you Harbour fans will know about the P3 ESR. I think set up right and when you're in a bit closer, the P3 ESR is a better speaker purely for vocals. However, this does a hell of a lot more in terms of bass, um, variety of music. It handles it all a lot better, even though it's not perfectly suited. So strings and vocals and woodwind instruments sound really, really nice. Mainly the strings and the vocals sound fantastic. As you, as you move up into the upper mids, they're definitely not upper mid forward if anything there may be a little uh i wouldn't say back but they, they just don't there's never a shouty moment there's never a moment where you, your ears are fatigued you never get that that harsh when you when you get that dynamic part of the song and, and when the dynamic range spikes up that you want to turn it down and go oh you're reaching for the remote just to just to turn it down and the, the designer of these speakers, Alan Shaw, he, he basically says, when do you go to listen to acoustic music, even when they're playing loud and you go, oh, like, let me, uh, can they turn that down? It's hurting my ears. Never. You know, natural instruments should never create this fatiguing, painful sound for your ears. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. And that's really what I get with this speaker. When it goes into the treble, um, as I said, I think the mids are really well presented. There's there's good resolution, there's good detail. As the treble frequencies come up, um, in that brilliance range, I think 
it's probably even starting to recess there. And through the rest of the treble, um, you do get a downward sloping sound. Um, there is some airiness, but you get a little bit of airiness. But if I was want wanting a whole bunch of airiness, this wouldn't be the speaker I'd, I'd go for. Um, or if I wanted something that just had the most ultimate treble resolution, again, it's not not the one that I would go for. Although you get a very satisfying natural sound of a, a cymbal hit. Um, but when you're going for those extreme treble details, just in the fact that it's rolled off, it's not the best bet on the market for this price point. So to sum it up, if you mainly listen to vocal type of music, acoustic type of music, chamber music, jazz music, just natural instruments, and you want to the most, I would say, I'm going to go as far as to say the most natural sounding realistic sounding speaker at this price point for that application the 30.1 is where you want to get to and i would say it's even a bit warmer and cozier and nice to listen to in a way than the 30.2 but the 30.2 is the superior speaker if i had my time again and i was a little bit less excited and more patient i would have waited for that 30.2 all right how does this image? It images actually pretty well. Um, it's not the most laser defined. Um, there's a brand called Spendo and they have a speaker in the similar price range. Now, the Spender speaker, it's really laser sharp. Like it's it's you can point exactly where each part of the image is. But in a way, is that really that organic for it to be laser? laser thin it almost in thin in the image whereas the harbeth is like there's sort of rounder media deeper entities to each sound so i liked that and i was getting depth nice depth to the imaging as well in my sound space but i had them you know about a meter and a half away from any surrounding walls so i really had them out in the room and i was just a bit back of if, if you measured an equal actual triangle into that standard seating position, I was a bit further back and that that's what suited my listening room. Um, but I was getting really nice depth to the sound. Listening to something like George Duke, um, I was getting really amazing placement of where everyone was in terms of how far back they were, how far forward they were. You know, you get imaging from far out to the left and the right of each speaker um, and the speakers totally disappear. They're easy to make disappear and they generally sound best when they're towed in. So they're pointing sort of just past your ears. They don't sound best with no toe in when they're just pointing straight ahead. They sound better when they're pointing sort of at or past the ears. So in setup, I would start there. The other thing I didn't mention is they are voiced with the grills on. I know they look great without the grills. They look awesome, but they're designed to sound better. Well, they were voiced with the grills on. So you can take them off. You might prefer the sound. It might sound better in your room. You know, you have to experiment, but grills on is how they were designed. So listen to them in that fashion. And that's what I would, that's what I would recommend. So what gear did I try these speakers out with? Well, amplifiers, I tried a bunch of different amplifiers from Sim Audio, Macintosh, um, Levadin. What else did I try? A whole, I think I tried about six different amplifiers, but I ended up landing on, for this speaker, um, the Levadin amplifier because... I think that amplifier is amazing at getting out of the way, you know, and with this speaker having character, you don't want an amplifier that's going to add character or a bit of second harmonic, harmonic distortion or that warmth. The speaker has the character that's so awesome. You want an amplifier that gets out of the way, you know, that doesn't, that just allows the harvest to sound as, as they intended. And then 
what was what was interesting is I found out that they actually use the Levadan amplifiers a lot of the time when they are at shows. So the Levadan was an amazing pair in in my opinion, really good pair. Um, I did notice with more power, like you generally get with all speakers, the sound stage became much larger and the bass became more present with more control. So it definitely scales with gear. However, I tried it with a very low cost Rotel A10 amplifier, I believe, and I was pretty surprised. It sounded pretty good, a little edgy, a little too excited. Not my favorite match, but for that price, I was shocked at this, this amp runs these speakers fine. Um, digital to analog converters, I had a Chord Cutest. I tried the um, the Brooklyn DAC. I tried the TT2, and I tried the um, Cyrus DAC and streamer and the Cambridge CXN DAC and streamer, um, from which I owned the um, cutest at the time. So I felt for the price point, the cutest was the one to go for. And again, it's not a DAC that has any sort of warmth or color. Core DACs are very just clean, accurate, present the music as is. So that was the stack I had at the time. I had the Levadan ITX reference and I had the Chord Cutest and I had the Harbeth 30.1s. And to be honest, I loved it. It was an amazing combination for the price. Definitely didn't cover every genre off perfectly, but it never made anything sound bad. And what it was designed to produce, those vocals and natural music, it made sound fantastic. So I know it's a bit of a mixed review. Some of it was good, some of it was bad, but at the end of the day, I just want to give you guys the ability to hear something that's pretty unbiased and I want to give you the ability to understand is this for me or is this not for me so I hope I did that and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one please remember to like and subscribe it means a lot to me I'm trying to get a new video out every single week and I'm having a few different series run along all at once and we're going to have a fair bit more hi-fi coming up as I've had a lot of focus on head fi in the past and there's going to be a whole bunch of different price ranges too. So don't feel left out if you're on a more on a lower budget and you're starting out in your journey. And there's going to be some high end stuff. So if you're into well into your journey and you want something advanced, it's all going to be there. But anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.